short video looking at sketching the Argand diagram when our complex number is in polar form. So, if we have a look over here at the axis, the first thing we need to make sure is that the horizontal axis is always the real term and the imaginary term is always the vertical or the y axis, if you will. <coughs> okay, so what's different in this form? We now have something that looks perhaps like this, r and theta, where theta is called the argument and r is the modulus. This makes more sense when we have an example. Let me just jump into an example. Okay, so I'm going to say Z1 is 245 degrees. So R is 2 and the angle theta is 45 degrees. If I want to sketch that on my R again diagram, how can I represent this over here? Well, in some of the previous videos we looked at Cartesian form and essentially we went so many across and so many up or down. In this case, I'm going to start off on the positive real axis, like so, and I'm then going to go anti-clockwise by 45 degrees. So I start here, I go anti-clockwise by 45 degrees to get to there. So if you like, you could imagine a straight line like so, and an angle of 45 degrees. What I'm really looking for is this dot at the end of that line. So I now know the angle, but this value here, r, tells me, if you like, the length of the line. So the length of the line is 2, and it takes me to this point here. Now, all I really need to do to represent z1 is this dot. So I've just included the angle and the straight line with its length, just to highlight how we'd go about finding it. But it's not a vector, it's not a, a line, it's just that dot, if you will, to represent that number. How else could we write this? Well, this is in degrees, and it may be working in radians. So I could have said the Z1 is 2, and then pi over 4. Exactly the same. Pi over 4 is equivalent to 45 degrees when it's pi over 4 radians. How else might this be written? Well, if it's in polar form, we need to know r and theta. We need to know the angle that we've gone through, and we need to know, if you like, how far away it is from the origin, so the length of the line. Could have been given in a different format. It could look something like this r, and then in brackets, cosine of theta plus j sine of theta. Now this looks a little bit more complicated, I think, than this or this. But essentially it's the same thing. You have to know r, you have to know the length of the line, the distance from the origin, and you have to know the angle, theta. How far have we gone anti-clockwise? Is it 20 degrees? Is it 45? Is it pi over 4 radians? Okay, so let's do one more example and plot it onto the Argand diagram. So what shall we do? What about if we do 3? What about if we do something like this? So I'm going to say Z2 is 3 and then cosine of 90 degrees plus J sine of 90 degrees. Now, if I want to plot that on there, all I need to know are the two things. What's the difference, sorry, the distance from the origin, how long is the line, and then what angle do I subtend anti-clockwise from positive real axis? Well, it's 90 degrees. So if I start here, and I come through 90 degrees, I'm now back on this imaginary axis, and the distance, or the length of the line, needs to be 3. So that point there, my dot would be Z2. And that dot there, of course, that was my Z1. Okay, so that's how we might plot 
on an ARC ARCAM diagram when we have our complex number in this particular form, polar form. Okay, thanks a lot.